Taurus, hello and welcome to your reading for the week of September 29th through to the 6th of October. Let's dive in. So we have the Earth. You all rule Earth, moving from 6 to 13 degrees Aries this week. We also have Uranus, Uranus stationed retrograde, uh, moving from 26 degrees 56 seconds to 26 degrees and 46 seconds. What does that mean? Your decisions around your beliefs are shifting. They're leveling up. You're coming into a better sense of belonging about what you've been thinking. You belong deciding about your life, about your reality, about who you are. And this, with the earth moving through your 12th house from 6 to 13 degrees, is how you're received, how receptible you are, and where you belong believing the line needs to be about how receptible, rece receptible, rece received you are, how you're received. We want people to receive us not only where we at, but where we belong, right? So if maybe we are acting our age, we're acting our shoe size tourists, we want for people to understand, hey, they got room to grow. I've been there too. We got Saraswati mastery speaking to that, speaking to mastery of the self, the mastery of the heart's coherence, coming from a place of balance, coming from a place of self belonging. When we belong to ourselves, um, it's kind of hard to throw you. It's kind of hard to throw you off of your um, direction of your sense of comfort of the emotional foundation that supports all of that which we are called to create in this life and to co-create with the divine so saraswati mastery mastery is a genuine sense of effortless effortless knowledge after a period of dedicated immersion so with the dolly deck the hermit card is represented by the glyph of uranus so you guys might be hermiting away as uranus is in your sign innovating how you guys i believe that aquarius makes your eighth house um yeah it does how you belong being invested in investing in others those long-term investment partners where is the line where's your foothold how much can you be supported by those these people how can they see you as growing leveling up just as we all are we are all human given this time in earth school to develop capacities to be a part of the ascension process to awaken to self-realization to um, be tested on how much of our soul can come into the body as we're navigating the physical density of this world the hindu goddess saraswati asks you to enter her domain of art language knowledge music and poetry and make this commitment to go the distance immerse yourself body mind and spirit in discovering all aspects of what is at hand learn and then learn some more right now if you adapt the role of apprentice and are willing to devote your heart and mind to something you will become a true master deep wisdom knows only continuous learning no matter what question you come to explore the goddess saraswati reminds you that the pursuit of mastery is never ending so enjoy every minute of it always in a state of arrival always in a state of arrival taurus are you someone, so this is for the alignment message, are you someone who begins things with great enthusiasm, but when you realize the scope of the situation, you move on to something else? Could it be that you're dealing with someone like this? Ambivalence is something to be careful of at this time as you recognize you need more knowledge and energy than what you have to move forward complete competently. The goddess Saraswati reminds you that there are no shortcuts on the journey and partial knowledge does not make you a master. In fact, your alignment task is to stop working in a scattered way. It's time for some deep diving into the subject of your inquiry to really get a command of the terrain. Offer the commitment of your time and energy, and you will feel the surge of power as you move into more masterful roles in all areas of your life. Stick with it, keep learning, and keep practicing your craft, your heart commitment, your meditation, your self-expression. Stay present to it all and you'll be glad you did. And we just have to give praise for our abilities where we've tried and come out as a master. Um, look to maybe you got a black belt and you started out not even knowing how to regulate your breathing. That's something that I'm working on now is just breath regulation. So take the time this week to really cherish where you've come from and where you are now. Transmute. Yeah, that feels like something that my husband came up with this so he's done a lot of fasting since 2017 and he said that um essentially we'll get the angels oh a card from Rumi first that um food 
somewhat blocks the chakras. So for the yogis, the masters who are um, meditating and in states of samadhi or able to um, ascend with their body, they are essentially consuming oil or something like that. And then the chakras have the breath to balance. But when we consume food, especially when we are consuming um, processed foods, foods with additives and hormones and all that, it does dysregulate the chakras. So just something to consider. Maybe um, you belong with a different diet. Maybe some of you need to be on an Ayurvedic diet rather than just consuming whatever you feel the food pyramid for the United States has suggested. Sorry if you guys can hear the lawn mowing people. We have the hand of Fatima. So here we go. Let's see what that has to say. I want to read this poem. I can never leave you, not for a moment, not for an hour. You are in everything I do. You are my everything. My drink is your sweetness. I move to your command. I am a surrendered prey in your hands, and you are my consuming lion. Your soul and my soul are truly one soul. I swear to our one soul. I long for no one but you. In the garden of your grace, I am only a germinating sprout. The crown of my blooming is the desire to be in your arms. And I would say that of you to yourself this week and you to um, the ways that you belong in investments with others and maybe even mastery over those investments is going to give you this nectar. My hand watches over you. It brings you blessings and comfort, protections and grace. Radiant with divinity am I, and you are my child, my beloved, my angel, and my body too. I shall never leave you. Turn your inner eye to me, and see the light of my grace in your heart. You cannot be harmed, you cannot be defiled, you can only ever be what you are, me, alive, radiant with love. Aww. Ooh, see, look at this. Okay, this oracle brings to you the message that your body is sacred and worth your attention. You do not have to become obsessed, you do not have to push or judge your body but you can honor them as a sacred animal through which your spirit creates soul and expresses itself to the world. This is truly wonderful and an amazing gift, extraordinary and yet fraught with challenge. The spirit can be powerful. Sometimes it can be hesitant too, enough to really engage with the body and come to life. There is a story that the angels sang music to lure the spirit into the body, but used to its freedom, it was reluctant to experience itself but used to its freedom, it was reluctant to experience itself in what looked like a rather confining matter. The spirit did not know what Fatima would be initiating the spirit into her mysteries through the body. She was going to be sharing the sensuality of life, the sacredness of love, the deep mystery of life, death, and rebirth, and the wonders of nature. She was going to show the divine could live not only in light, but also in flesh. I love when this happens. So um, we have to transmute our, in our food, in our food sources. You know, I've heard that drinking, um, like, what's it called? Unpasteurized milk is really good for you. And that was something that was, um, it was made illegal by someone who sat in a council, a Rothschild who sat in a council um, and made it illegal. So, Knight of Wands, there is a need to transform something that we've been thinking about. Um, I, was, I listened to an interview Rick Rubin gave, and he, he spoke to changing his meetings to walking meetings. And I've also heard, um, I forget who from, but they mentioned like, um, what, why can't dates, oh, this was Young Pueblo, be walking dates. You walk 20 blocks with someone and you decide if you want to keep walking with them. Why does it have to be meeting at a bar or even a show or something that kind of makes every date monotonous and feel the same? So we have the tower. Yeah, that, that energy of Aries, the Earth and Aries, 6 to 13 degrees, it's really going to help you to shake up and see where you've been ignoring reality, where you've been just sort of building and building and building. Oh, I'm so industrious. Oh, I can make like a thousand things a day. Well, where have you been blocking out reality to enjoy it, to make it into something that is so divine and makes you a master of yourself? We have the world so things are really shifting and changing and now we see with the, our beliefs with pluto and capricorn that is the glyph of capricorn those of y'all wondering um 
our beliefs are changing about what's important and how we can get things done. Maybe with a more uh, supportive eighth house energy of our shared investments and people can receive us in ways that allow for us to say, yeah, we want to take that walking meeting. We'll walk for an hour. We'll get everything done with notes and then we'll send it to our assistant. And they'll type everything up and we'll have it done that way. We have the um, six, 10 of coins. So, wow. Um, yeah, your community is very much coming through and that's because Saturn and Neptune are making sure that your spirit is conforming into matter. The more that you take note of mastering yourself and your emotions and your energy and making sure that you're regulating yourself and, you know, taking those walking lunches or walking meetings rather than just sitting at a desk on Zoom all day and you feel really stagnant and sore and in pain and you're serving a lot of people, you know, it's got to be balanced out and we're going to find that Yes, your community is willing to support you um, with getting creative, with doing things in a new way. And it's most important that you're willing to make these changes because you, you do have um, the challenge this week, if you choose to accept it, of receiving your life in a new way, of seeing this vessel as not a run-through, Taurus. This is not a run-through. This really counts. Every um, gift that you give can be something that you just are in the moment. You can be giving the gift of your presence of your soul's beauty in the moment and that would create a lot of value for you a lot of emotional stability for you we have the two of earth and it just feels like we're building um from the ten to the two it feels like we're building our from our feelings so maybe you've been building off your ego and thinking oh i'm so industrious look at how many babies i can make and pop out and look at them they're running around the world well how do you feel are you exhausted do you need more support do you need to open up to your community more? All of this will be more notable once Venus crosses over the, uh, the moon crosses over Venus on Sunday the 6th. So I also want to look at your ruling day, Venus day. Let's see what happens on that day. Yeah, the earth will be at 11 degrees um, Aries. So with your identity, we're going to have to be sure that you are really intentional with the divine about how you're showing up because you might be assuming it's a certain way, but it really is giving a mixed message to people. And this is going to be something that you're going to feel really clear about. Um, you'll know it when you feel it. When you're in integrity, it shows, it's returned tenfold. You feel good. You feel seen. You don't feel that ego competition, you know, that need to show off and show how much you did because of a, a way that you're seen whenever you do a lot. Maybe it's more about how you feel when you do all that. Domine de fa, silence. Okay, something goes, the moon, yeah, moon in Libra will be at 24 degrees on Friday, um, and that will be in a 10 degree orb from Mercury, so our feelings and how we communicate them will be manifesting something new regarding our daily life. So if we need to have those walking meetings, it's going to come through, but we do have to sit in the silence, and that would be like a Neville Gard Goddardian technique of um, visualizing what you would like to see bring brought forth into your life. We have move beyond fear as well. Unconditional love at the bottom of the deck. And maybe it's something new. Maybe you were punished for walking around your neighborhood as a kid and it's something that's stuck with you. You know, these things we really do have to nurture ourselves through the old, through the body's response to a physical living in that small suit and need to be more expressive. We have that, that right and that freedom and almost that um, obligation to do that now, Taurus. Silence is where you find the deepest wisdom. In stillness, you cross, cross the boundary between worlds and gain insight into your questions from a completely different perspective. But always use discernment. As a sovereign being, you decide what to take from your contact with other realms. Huh. I'm going to read this one because I, I haven't gotten this one before. There are hundreds of megalithic sites and structures in southern France. Mary Magdalene would have come across many of them in her travels and perhaps even been in contact with their ancestral lineage. It's only natural to want to connect with the primal land within. She would have known that the fairy people and the humans coexisted in the same realm in ancient times. They even intermarried. At the, at the time, it was accepted as an energy of life. Later, when humans became more violent, regressive, and patriarchal, 
Some of these gentle beings retreated into the earth to guard and protect their sensitive frequencies. It's no wonder that Sarah, Mary Magdalene, and their companions chose to settle in this part of the world. So many areas of southern France were already charged with the presence of elevated beings, portals, and ancient energies, many of which can still be felt today. It was a land conducive to embracing the knowledge Sarah and Mary Magdalene brought and taught to the local people. From here, it would spread across Europe and the world, never to be entirely extinguished or suppressed. If you wish to commune with the ancestors or beings from the other world, find a place where the barriers weaken and ask permission to enter. This could be a dolmen, a fairy ring, so like a circle of mushrooms that spreaded, or an ancient sacred site. Relax into stillness until you feel it is safe to cross the threshold. An unforeseen guide or ally might appear, but use discernment in allowing this being to enter your sovereign space. Hmm. That's interesting. I need a I need a um, clarification card. The angels did want to volunteer, and maybe this is why. So, um, I would say you know, going somewhere that you feel pure, maybe even the ocean, a lake, a body of water, to do this sort of connection work, um, and not your house, Taurus. You don't want to sit and open portals in your home. I've heard that from a channeler because um, there is a level of. Uh, consent maybe in a sacred space like a church, a cathedral. We have justice, Archangel Raguel. Fair and just decisions, do what you know is right, stand up for your beliefs. I would even just say that this Dolmen Defad silence, because I've, I've been seeing more people doing Vipassana now than ever, a day a week of just silence. Can you afford that? Is that something that you can move into your practice, even if it's just an hour a day of just silence? And you don't speak a word, you don't text, you don't call anyone. You just have this luxury of retreating into yourself. Okay, Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in. For you Tauruses that are just checking this out to get a sun or ascendant reading, go on ahead and watch your moon sign. Maybe a couple houses that you might have concerns with. Just know that that's something that I practice. I like to get a full picture to work better with the week ahead energies. Thank you so much to my subscribers for being here. You guys mean the world to me. Go on ahead and share one of my readings with a friend who you know can use some empowering guidance. Thank you guys, and until next time, aloha.